Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Robert and today I want to discuss Mint Night. I got this on a crowd sale earlier this year and it sat on my shelf till yesterday when uh, I just felt uh, compelled to finally try it out. I will admit that uh, I pushed it off for a while because uh, I was, um, uh, well, I had heard that the, the game was a bit tough to learn from the rules uh, that, uh, you know, you had to juggle between Reddit and uh, Board Game Geek and the designer's YouTube videos to learn the game. Um, but uh, yesterday, when I decided I wanted to try the game, I checked the Board Game Geek files section, and I was thinking, well, maybe somebody compiled uh, all the FAQ questions so that it was uh, cl more clear, right? So that it would make the learning experience uh, less uh, painful. Uh, and as it happens, uh, when I checked, uh, this is the sole file in uh, Board Game Geek. Uh, it is a fan-made rulebook, and uh, I really want to thank um, uh, this uh, individual, this user. Uh, their name is Hubert. Okay, uh, so Hubert uh, took it upon uh, themselves to uh, compile uh, the FAQ and and make a, a big rulebook. Uh, a well, it's just a right a standard page a size rule book that uh, takes into consideration uh, FAQ, all right? Uh, and I, this is what I used to learn the game. I did not see the designer's uh, video. Uh, I didn't, I did, I barely read the rules that are included in the game. I most, I mostly just every now and then I reference them. This is what the tin includes. It's uh, these rules cards. Uh, they're uh, tiny text, but the information's there. Uh, but there has been a lot of FAQ, uh, you know, for clarification, and uh, it, 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 it's been uh, documented in a few different places. So I was really thankful to find uh, this document. So uh, I want to really, uh, once again, I really want to shout out uh, this uh, fella right here for making this uh, file. It made the uh, learning experience uh, uh, relatively painless. Uh, even as an experienced uh, Mage Knight player, uh, it still took me a bit to wrap my head around this. Uh, I have played three games so far. Uh, the, I've lost two of them. The first one I lost. Uh, this last one, this is the end state of the... Um, this is the end uh, board state of that third game, which I lost, so I won my second game. But uh, So now, I, uh, I'll, I'll mention this, though. Um, Yes, yesterday, which is where I, when I started playing this game at, at around noon, my after uh, my afternoon, my evening completely just disappeared because I got so immersed playing this game. Um, it 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 does an exceptional job in um, compartmentalizing the uh, mage night experience into this tin, and it it is just remarkable uh, how 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 it utilizes the how it um, go, gets around the component limitation to try to fit the experience in here. Uh, just exceptionally, exceptionally well made. I completely got immersed and like four hours went by for those first two games. To be fair, uh, uh, a lot of that time was also wrangling with uh, the rules, uh, but uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, it's, it's just... It's just a, uncanny <laughs> it and it, maybe some of you have seen my uh, dragons of etching stone um, video uh, i will make a comparison uh, of these the, the two as far as um, mage knight adaptations go uh, but um, I'll, I'll more on that later but i do want to mention that the, uh, in that video i brought up the fact that i i it, it felt like uncanny how when I learned the game, like I could not believe what I was experiencing when, when wow, I'm like playing Mage Knight in, in my hand with a handful of cards. How is that possible? Uh, I I pretty much had the same experience here. Um, it, it's the the puzzle. Uh, I, this is just it's just a feat uh, that um, the the designer was able to uh, that the designer was able to uh, fit that experience with these components in that box. Uh, so uh, I I want to elaborate more more a bit uh, on the, uh, the the rules because that that really is my only negative honestly uh, I think this is an ex exceptional game I, I'll elaborate a bit more on that but uh, as far as the rules that that really is my only negative uh, even as an experienced uh, mage knight player um, 
there are a few things that felt a bit vague, even with the fan-made rules. Um, I, because uh, um, uh, there, there, there's a couple things that make sense, like if you've played Mage Knight, but even from like I, I'm trying to like put myself on in the shoes of uh, what if someone who hasn't played Mage Knight plays this. Uh, I think they definitely would have a, a bit of a hard, uh, diff difficult time understanding the concepts, but. Uh, as a Mage Knight player, I can definitely say that it helped. Uh, a lot of it is uh, the compromises as far as the components, you know, fundamentally change uh, uh, the rules uh, be because, you know, <laughs> there's not the same amount of components. So you kind of have to wrap your head around how the designer uh, made, changes to, um, made changes to adjust the game for this scale. Uh, but... Um, uh, that, that really is my only negative. The, the, the learning it wasn't the most fun, even as an experienced uh, night player. Uh, but once you do, it just clicks. Uh, it, it's it's great, and uh, the designer uh, has a, a full playthrough that you can go through uh, if you if you want to see how how it plays. And uh, the designer is very active in answering questions on the board game geek page. Okay, so that really is my only negative. Now. Um, the let's mention the components and the art. Um, the art is not the selling point. It's very um, you know it gets the job done. It's clear. Um, the the only uh, as far well the, the only thing is the the font size on the rule book, but it's it's still legible. Uh, but this honestly, I treat this more as like a reference when I need to check. Uh, you know when I need to when I don't want to go through the entire rule book, which uh, the. Um, the designer, by the way, offers a PDF. Uh, they offer a PDF uh, with uh, the the full, um, more fle fleshed out rules. Um, but I still use these every now and then to look up like an ability or a specific phase of, of the turn uh, to like a memoir, uh, you know, to, to like refresh myself on it uh, rather than paging through uh, the big rule book. So th this still is useful even though the, the text is small. Um, but uh, yeah, that, uh, that's the only negative I have as far as the components is just how small the text is in this, but it, it's still useful. Uh, but all the information's there. There's a couple of inconsistencies with the text uh, when describing some of the card abilities, but uh, if you've played um, Mage Knight, uh, like you, you'll kind of infer what uh, the uh, what those ambiguities uh, mean, right? Uh, you, you'll know what, what the designer meant. Um, but okay, so I know I keep bringing up um, you know, uh, ex experience a uh, Mage Knight player and whatnot. Uh, I don't want to deter you from, from playing this game if you're not an experienced uh, Mage Knight player because as it turns out, uh, the, uh, the the person that made uh, this file, they're not they stated that they don't have any previous experience with Mage Knight and they're big fans of the game to, to, be, uh, to the extent that they went ahead and made this file. That's how much they like it, okay? Uh, so that and you know I, I've seen as much from reading some of the reviews. Uh, folks have stated that even with no prior Mage Knight experience, that they still enjoy the game a lot. Okay, um, so uh, a lot of fun to be had here, and definitely this has made it to my. Uh, this will be an evergreen game as far as portable games go, um, with a couple caveats. Because uh, when I take games for uh, you know for trips and things like that, uh, uh, they have. Uh, when and how I can play the game can depend on you know the the footprint and things like that. Uh, this is a game that is not quick. At least uh, it takes me at the very minimum, even with uh, understanding the rules uh, the way I do now. I think this will take me at least an hour. I think an hour and a half is more what it will take me because I really like analyzing the board and figuring out the puzzle of the combat. Uh, so hour to hour and a half. The designer in uh, his playthrough, it took him 45 minutes, and I think that after like maybe 10 uh, more plays, I might reduce the play time to, I might reduce the play time to an hour, but, uh, you know, depending on where you're going to take this game with you, maybe you're not going to have an hour to an hour and a half to play it, but um, I, I really like how the designer used the double-sided cards here, uh, so uh, Double-sided tiles. I like how uh, the there's an enemy reference. So every time that you draw a tile, you randomly draw one of these colored boxes. Okay, uh, and 
uh, and then depending on the colored uh, boxes, <laughs> colored cubes, uh, and the colored cube will determine the type of enemy that you're going to encounter. So you reference this, okay? Uh, so I, I like the way that the designer uh, implemented that, making sure that each map tile could have three different possibilities for enemies, depending on the color of the cube that you draw. Um, I like the double-sided, um, the double-sided uh, ability cards, okay? Uh, well done throughout the game you, you'll get to upgrade three of them all right and they're double use so you uh, you use them on their starting side every round and then you flip them to their uh, waning side before they're discarded for good so essentially you get you get to use each card twice um, so uh, I, uh, what I'm saying is I just really like the the way that with the component limitation, the way that the designer figured out to get the best out of them. Uh, I did add a couple things of my own, so you might notice here that I'm using black cubes where you're supposed to use the gold cubes. Uh, I just prefer using these gold cubes for uh, these gold cubes for uh, when when you produce gold mana. Uh, I just like using these cubes for that instead. Uh, these are uh, Lord of the Ring uh, tokens, okay, that I use for when I. Um, when I succeed in a battle in a location, uh, I just prefer that over the black cube, and it, it fits back in the box no problem. Uh, and I uh, I sleeved the all the tiny cards with uh, mini euro. I did have to trim them. Uh, I, I did have to trim them uh, a couple of millimeters so that it didn't have that excess uh, above them. Uh, this this and I think that next to dragons of etching stone, let, let's get into the comparisons now. Okay, I've been more in depth with that. Uh, so the biggest advantage that dragons of etching stone have, in my opinion, is the learning experience. Uh, when I read the rule book for that game, I did not have to consult anybody. I didn't have to go ask any questions. Everything was in there, and that was it. I think there was one minor errata, uh, but other than that, you know, like I didn't have to ask any questions. I, I did uh, for this. I did have to go on Board Game Geek a couple of times and check the previous rules uh, rules questions, but even with the uh, the FAQ and the fan made version, like uh, th there's still a couple of things that uh, might feel fuzzy, but uh, as far as the rules, but uh, I, I think I, I have a pretty good hang of the game by by this third play that I I made uh, that I just had. So that's a biggest advantage. Um, I do like. Um, I do like the, the graphic design in, in Dragons of Etching Stone a bit more, although I'll say I like the pixel the pixel characters here. I, pr I prefer the pixel uh, art of the characters. Uh, I prefer this over the um, like the low poly um, character artwork from uh, Dragons of Etching Stone. I prefer the little tiny pixelated characters uh, in, in this case. Um, but uh, so yeah, rules, uh, graphic design, uh, and playtime. Okay, so Dragons of Etching Stone. Once you learn the rules, you should comfortably be able to play Dragons of Etching Stone in thirty minutes. Uh, whereas here for uh, Midnight, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's a longer game, uh, and also Dragons of Etching Stone, you can play it anywhere in your hand, even on a table in a very very small space. Uh, Midnight will require a bit, uh, definitely some um, some. Uh, table um, more of a footprint, but there's nothing terrible. It's actually all things considered. It really doesn't occupy that much space. All right, that that's your comparison there. Um, Midnight is more expensive. It's about uh, twice the price. So there's that too. Uh, but 100% worth it. And I really want to thank uh, the designer for uh, making this because, like, it, it's just a. Uh, it's just a a feat, like being able to uh, cram the entire Mage Knight experience with these few components. One other advantage versus Dragons of Etching Stone, I really like the tactile experience here more. I like the, the, that there's more cards, there's tokens. I appreciate that since this has more components, it's, it has a bit more of a tactile experience. But yeah, uh, thank you so much. I really want to thank the designer. This, this is such a, a cool, cool game. And as a Mage Knight fan, I'm really happy that I finally got to try this and it has become a evergreen game for uh, travel and, and as far as portable games go. Uh, yeah, so that uh, is my uh, solo thoughts on Midnight. Amazing game, really uh, worthwhile and it, it makes me glad that a platform that uh, a platform like um, uh, like a game crafter exists for people to create something like this. It's just, uh, I, I love that this exists so much, but uh, let me show you now how all of it uh, fits back in the box.
All right, so now I just want to show you how it all fits back in here. I did add a couple extra tokens and uh, other tidbits, and I sleeved the small cart, and it all fits back in there just fine. Uh, so here are the larger cards. Uh, these don't really need to be sleeved, honestly. Of course, I would love to, but uh, it's all right. Uh, they don't need to be sleeved. Uh, they don't get shuffled all that much, and, they're, and they have really rounded corners, so it, it wouldn't work anyway, and it wouldn't fit back in there. Uh, so yeah, these are the large cards. I do have this little, uh, uh, like, I cut this back so that it acts as like a sleeve so that um, I'm able to remove it easily, how, how you just saw uh, there, okay? So I'm able to just uh, do this and it all comes out like that. Uh, so I have the, uh, I have the uh, mini cards here and um, uh, they, I have this tiny bag that I cut so that they all are stuck together like that. And yeah, uh, these are Mayday sleeves, Mayday uh, soft sleeves, by the way, uh, Euro sized. Uh, and I already mentioned why I added these. Um, I I liked, uh, and I wanted to have more, by the way, because uh, I just wanted to cover uh, in, in the game, you're going to be the fitting areas, even though it's not necessary. Uh, three cubes, the game includes three cubes. Uh, for you to cover the enemies that you defeat, and that's fine. I just wanted to have more, so I'm using these Lord of the Rings uh, tokens. Uh, and I added uh, a couple of very tiny, I think these are four millimeter dice uh, for uh, tracking mana. Okay, and, they, and I added exactly, and there's very, there's very, very limited space here. Uh, so uh, I was able to add exactly these four, and that's it. Uh, I, uh, you can't add anything else after this. It's, it's packed completely in there. Uh, I did. Um, I didn't mention why I added this. So this is for um, uh, this chart for the enemies. Uh, I wanna, uh, you know, because th this board is very visually busy and the text is so tiny. Uh, I just like using this for when I'm in a certain region and a region has a specific color cube. I can just point here uh, to what enemy I'm supposed to be facing. So. Because uh, this whole board is so it's so visually busy that it, it was like really distracting me. So uh, just uh, using this helped that definitely helped me a lot. So that I know you know every time I glance over to this card, I know which enemy I, I'm, I'm facing, and I don't have to like refer to this uh, every time. All right, and as you can see, as you can see, it all fits back in there. But yeah. So that's midnight, and I want to thank you so much uh, for watching. If you enjoy this content, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, put them in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one.